If it can be said that any artist has found a perfect form of personal expression, then G.H. Rota has found hers. Collectors from all over the world treasure her work. In fact, more than 60,000 works by G.H. Rota have been sold to discerning collectors throughout the world. Collectors who repeatedly respond to the vast reservoir of intuitive sensation G.H. Rota has tapped deeply into and fully expresses in her work, and which she has meticulously carved, chiseled, and hammered into copper and printed on fine handmade paper. Leaving home in northern Germany at the earliest possible moment in her life, the young woman joined a brother studying design at the Academy of Pforzheim a safe place, but inappropriate for a youthful woman determined to become a fine artist. Nevertheless, the young Gatya remained at the academy, studying, later to marry her professor, Kurt Rota. When she was not taking care of a young family, G.H. Rota continued to draw and paint, showing her work at first to her husband, later exhibiting in group shows. Public acclaim grew, resulting in her first one-man show, sales of her art, commissions. This recognition led in 1968 to the prestigious Villa Romana Award, coveted by every artist in Europe, allowing her a year to live and to work in her art in Florence, Italy. Later, she traveled widely, embarking finally for South America and the United States. Arriving in New York in December 1970, G.H. Rota set up a small studio in a corner of an unheated $60 a month apartment she found in the East Village. It was in 1973, and during her first experiments with mezzotint engraving, that an extraordinary metamorphosis occurred in her work, leading to the exquisite refinements of her later pieces. She begins creating a mezzotint with a simple drawing, sketched directly onto a copper plate with a dry point tool. The drawing continually evolves as the plate develops into its final form. Specific areas of the plate are gradated with a rocker, a chisel-like tool with a rounded end, allowing it to be rolled or rocked from side to side as it moves over the surface of the copper plate. The blade of each rocker is serrated with parallel grooves ending in points that pierce tiny holes into the copper plate. Magnified, these holes appear as a series of pits and burrs, which will later catch the ink. This lengthy process develops the ground, a shimmering field of lines crossing in countless directions, the area upon which the detail of the composition will be drawn with a dry point tool or burnisher. The number of hours that will be expended rocking and burnishing depends upon the size and complexity of the subject. Often she will work more than 500 hours before a plate is finished and ready for printing. This demands tremendous physical strength and limitless patience. Many painstaking hours later, this sheet of copper will have become a plate from which the first impression or master print of a G.H. Rota original mezzotint will be pulled. My efforts of learning mezzotint, which took me 10 years, justifies itself in the results. This forgotten technique yields to my intuition through my hands. In this way, I have complete control of the entire range of gradation of tone as well as the liveliness of the line, unobtainable in any other process intended for multiples. To G.H. Rota, the process of drawing on or crushing and smoothing the surface of the grounded plate is a process of bringing light out of darkness, a metaphor for her work and for her life. G.H. Rota develops her subjects through painterly gradations of tone from light to dark, rather than through the engraved line alone. As she draws with the burnisher, the rocker lines are smoothed, 
leaving spaces on the plate where ink will not stick. As consequence, this burnished area will print white. Repeatedly, she goes over an area with the burnisher, creating the transparent images which are so characteristic of these extraordinary mezzotints. But line and tone are not the only concern of the artist. Execution of colors is another. Color determines and explains, also intensifies my purpose. Gradations of hue are as important to me as gradations of tone. With the help of her assistant, Krista, the inking process is begun. The plate is inked with the darkest colors first. The next lighter color is added, which in this case is a deep blue. Then a brilliant red is added. Where she wants a specific hue, one color is carefully hand wiped into another. Hand wiping creates highlights and simultaneously drives surface ink down into the plate. The skin of my hand, in the process of hand wiping, cleans the metal plate better than anything else. I am able to achieve a wide gradation of hues by directly blending one color into another. This process is repeated as many times as necessary to achieve a perfect balance of color and tone. When the inking has been completed, the plate is put on the traveling bed of the press in preparation for striking the master print, which becomes the guide for all future printings. The soft, thick paper, which has been wetted, absorbs the ink efficiently. It is covered by three layers of felt creating an elastic thickness between the plate and the steel roller of the press. The felts draw moisture from the paper, causing the simultaneous absorption of ink from the plate. The pressure of the roller forces the paper into every line, crevice, and irregularity on the plate. The burrs pierce the delicate surface of the paper allowing the ink to penetrate deeply into the fibers. Each print is milled through the press twice, so the paper will pick up the maximum amount of ink. The vibrant colors and delicate tones on this master print become the reference for all future inking and printing of this particular issue. G. H. Rota's life is as one with art and one with nature. Few of us are ever able to communicate our thoughts and feelings as she does with her work. Truly, she has found her own medium. When you plant some trees, you can have a specific purpose to please yourself, to hide, to play in them. But there could be another reason that you planted 